Hi, welcome to Talking Books and Stuff, the program that talks all about books and writing and stuff. Here's your host, Dennis Rimmer. And this is Talking Books and Writing and Stuff. Today we're talking mainly about stuff with a professional actor, Kent Allen, who's been a pro at this business mainly in Canada, I assume, for well over 40 years. Kent Allen, thanks for coming on Talking Books and Stuff with us today. Well, it's entirely my pleasure, Dennis. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Now, were you born and raised in the Saskatoon area to start things off? Uh, I was born in Moose Jaw, actually, and um, then the family moved when I was around 11 years old to Weyburn, and then I went through high school in Weyburn and then took to university in Regina for a while, and I was living in Regina till 83 when I moved up to Saskatoon. So how did you get the acting bug? Did did that come in high school, in university? How did that come about? Um, I think it was... (laughs) It was a very slow-growing thing, I believe. Uh, um, I I don't think there was a distinct moment when I, you know, the light bulb went on and I said, that's it. But um, we used to listen to CBC radio a lot, and they had a lot of BBC programming. Uh, Wonderful wordplay shows like uh, My Word and and, uh, 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 lots of inventive comedic uh, radio uh, repartee and and I used to enjoy doing takeoffs of that, doing accents and uh, doing Terry Thomas and all of that sort of stuff. And, and I guess that sort of started me. Um, and so and, and so when after I moved to Weyburn, uh, I, I was pulling the curtain for a high school show, and uh, there was a, a fellow who was helping with the makeup for this show. And we got together and we thought we, we would like to do something, but not quite what was going on at the high school. So we started uh, what became Flatlands Experimental Theater Company. We did a lot of improv and dance dramas and things like that, worked with the kids in the parks. And that's sort of where that interest developed into something. And when you went to university in Regina, was that the, as a drama major? Yes. So, 43 years of pro, it's Kent Allen with us. Do you remember your first paid role as such? Well, uh, I, I would have to believe it would be um, during a summer when we were at uh, the university, a group of us got together, uh, formed a little company called Merely Players with the help of a couple of profs at the university. And we toured the parks in the province. And so it was under a, uh, what was called then, if I remember this rightly, an opportunity, OFY grant opportunities for youth. So that would have been a, a, the first paid theatrical gig. And then now there's unions are involved. So how did you actually get your, what kind of card is it? Do you have a, a SAG card or ACTRA or? Well, I, uh, SAG, no. Um, that. The Screen Actors Guild, that's an American uh, entity. Uh, so I, I'm a member of ACTRA and of Equity, both of which are um, associations as opposed to unions. Um, we're not unionized in the, in the typical way. We have, an, it's called an association of like-minded people. Um, so, uh, so that's what I got. Gotcha. And... So with that, you get to actually have the, well, I'll call them union union benefits, but there is a bit of structure to when you sign a contract, let's say, to do a play that that comes into play, right? That you have to... Yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so your first actual uh, stage play, uh, other than with like a youth group, uh, what was that? Um, It would have been at the Globe Theatre during the days of Ken Kramer. Um, and I can't remember which would have been the first show. I was, you know, just uh, playing small parts. It, it might have been Inherit the Wind might have been it, I think. That might have been one of the first ones. And then I did a number of shows there at the Globe with uh, with uh, Ken Kramer directing. And as I was living in Regina, I, I 
work quite a bit there uh, for a while. And Stage West uh, developed there, too. There was a Stage West, and I got some shows at Stage West. So when did you decide, actually, that this was going to be your your way to make a living for the rest of your life? <laughs> uh I had no such long-term plans, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I decided to to participate <clears throat> in the uh, become a member of Equity uh, in, in 1977. Uh, the work was coming, um, and it, it seemed to be uh, viable. So <clears throat> I thought <clears throat> it would be better to to uh, approach it formally rather than uh, sort of uh, the helter-skelter approach I had been taking. I was working at uh, a grocery store as well. So I decided that I would, I would take the plunge in uh, 1977 and become a, a formal member of the acting fraternity. And uh, it's been going since. And the rest is history. <laughs> yes, as they say. Boom. Done. <laughs> so have you've traveled across the country, have you, with various... Uh, companies here, there, and everywhere? I've, I've had the very good fortune to have worked pretty widely. I've done shows. Uh, I did a tour of uh, New Brunswick, um, working with Theatre New Brunswick when they used to tour the province, so we went around the whole province. And uh, I worked quite a bit in Montreal, uh, Thunder Bay, uh, Sudbury. <clears throat> I've worked in, um, uh, and I've done shows in Edmonton, Calgary, Richmond, uh, uh, Prince George, uh, and uh, of course Saskatoon. And so, but Saskatoon's yeah. mainly been your base all these years. Yes, yes, it certainly has. Yeah, it's been very good to me. So, how many actual roles do you think you've uh, had over those years? Ooh, <laughs> ooh. Uh, I think I have had, and I don't have an exact count, and my memory is terrible, but I've had around, I think, 200 um, professional uh, performances, professional contracts. And so, like you say, it's just one contract after another, so it's not really a, a secure way to make a living, is it? <laughs> well, it's a bit of a tap dance. I mean, it's not, you don't, because we don't have rep companies, like Stratford is a rep company, and and uh, um, Niagara on the Lake has a has a, a operating rep company where you can get long term contracts. But other than that, the theaters around here op operate on a one contract gig. So you have you know you have one role. You might get another one after that, but who knows? Uh, so you're pitching all the time. As you're working, you're always pitching to other theaters. Now, do you have an agent and that kind of stuff, or is it all on your own? <clears throat> well, when uh, when Saskatchewan had a film and television industry, yeah. uh, you would need an agent for that. Right. But for theater, it just doesn't. No, you, it doesn't make. You're not making enough money to actually afford a, an agent, and and you can represent yourself, I think, better than than someone else in in that milieu. In film, it's quite different. And you said when Saskatchewan had a film and television industry, which is, I don't want to, it disturbs me because next door in Winnipeg, basically, they're turning up movies left, right, and center. Oh, well, if we can't make it there, we'll go to Calgary. We'll just fly over Saskatchewan where the studio's sitting there empty. All talent is everywhere. Yeah. And they all had to leave to go work, you know, behind the scenes. And I've been on a few movies and TV sets myself just as an extra. But I know that the jobs are intense. They're long hours. Uh, a lot of them pay quite well. But you work your butts off, to say the least. Like, it's a hard way to make an easy living, as somebody said. And, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. the government... It, it employs... It, it, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it employs a vast number of people. Besides the actors and the people on set, there's the people behind the building the set, the painting, the the script supervisors, the editors. I mean, it's it's uh, if you watch the end of a movie right. and you watch it right through to the end, there's hundreds of people involved in every production. And they're all working like from one job to another, so it's not um, you know it's you're getting dirty and you're working long hours but if you're not in the oil industry the government here doesn't care about you up oh, enough of the politics yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's 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 a hard working industry but, but it is true 
Yeah, yeah, it is true. So over the years, uh, I'm sure you have favorite roles or performances that stand out in your mind. Uh, what would you say has been some of your favorites? Um, I'll try and put this, I suppose, in some chronological order. I, I enjoyed very much um, Butterflies Are Free, working with Nancy Culp, which was my first uh, dinner theater production. It was quite different than uh, than the traditional sort of theater because um, you know the audience is there long before, but basically before you are, they're dining, they're having some drinks, and and uh, so it's a different audience, a different atmosphere. But and working with someone who was well known at the time, um, she was uh, Miss Jane on the Beverly Hillbillies. That's right. Yeah. And then ran for Congress or state representative or something. Yeah, I think. Yep. yeah. So, and uh, anyway, it was it was it was a different milieu and it had a different energy, and I I, I really enjoyed that. I, I did. It was, that was that was good. Um, gosh, it's it's hard to think. There's been so many good roles. Uh, I I've just uh, sort of finished up with the retired from the Shakespeare Festival here in Saskatoon, but it's uh, I had some wonderful. Roles, even this just finishing with the Scottish play, there was a, a mix, a, a, lo- a lovely mix of roles for me, and <laughs> I, I like that. I like I like changing roles. Changing and now the parts. Scottish play, you're not supposed to say the title. Is that true? That's that is the case for <laughs> okay, most of us. Well, Some people it. don't care, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shakespeare. Okay, As, uh, tell me how I'm. Tell me how to understand Shakespeare. Well, it's it's actually you know it's the English language. A lot of it is if people um, aren't trained appropriately, it's it's not an easy thing. But it's very musical. So if you understand it as music, and and all, all language is music. I mean, we go up and down as you know as I'm talking, I'm going up and down the scale and all over here. So it, music uh, language is music in any case. But Shakespeare is a rhythmic, is a very specific uh, iambic pentameter uh, text, so it's very, very musical. And if you understand the music of it, it becomes alive. It really comes to life. So the actors have to know what they're doing when they, when they get into Shakespeare, in terms of using the text. And the audience should be just as well versed in it, I think? Uh, well, it helps if you're familiar with the material. Obviously, there's a lot of ar- archaic references. Um, some of the language is something we're not used to, but it's okay if you just open yourself up to it. The actors have to make sense of it. If they're not making sense of it, that's their problem, not the audience's problem. Gotcha. And uh, how do you remember all those lines? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, it's, I mean, obviously we rehearse and we work on it, and then you have to be, like, actors are interpretive artists. We're, we're not uh, creative artists. We interpret the poet, whoever the poet is, whoever the author is. So our job is to make sense of what's happening on stage, and that's, and that's a good way to learn. You have to make sense. You have to be honest with it, and, and then it, uh, because... Um, I mean, a good play is logical. It makes sense. Uh, you know what you're doing. So if you can do that, and, and instead of thinking of it as a bunch of words, then it, then you can get the flow of it, and it's, it becomes easier. As you get older, it's a little bit different. Can't, I mean, remembering words is a little harder. <laughs> and uh, I think um, the one time I saw a bit of a Sir Lawrence Olivier film version, I think, of Hamlet, and I actually understood what he was saying. Because he seemed to just yeah, go slow he, and naturally, he, he and it. it just seemed yeah. to be a normal conversation. Yeah. So, yeah, as opposed to uh, people just shouting a bunch of strange words at me, which sometimes I don't quite catch. If you know which, what I mean, which can which can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think actors ever retired, though. Well, in some ways, uh, like I'm not retiring entirely. Um, but um, the theater world is changing. The theater world in, in uh, Saskatoon is changing. And I think one has to be wise to one's responsibilities. Um, 
I I also uh, have committed a lot of summers to the the festival, and I think it's fair to say it's time to get some new blood in there. And uh, there's lots of talented people in the community, um, and I would like to enjoy, <laughs> as I'm getting older, <laughs> enjoy some of the summers in in Saskatchewan. Um, as opposed to just uh, some of the winter. Right, <laughs> and some of the winters here and there when you're not flying off to Sudbury or some place like that. Yeah, which, which isn't a whole lot different in, <laughs> in, uh, in weather patterns. So. Now, were, were you in the Buddy Holly story? Both times, yeah. Uh, because I said to my wife, I said, oh, I'm interviewing Kent Allen, and she said, Kent Allen, he's great. Remember him was in the Buddy Holly story. He's fantastic. Wow, how'd you do that? <laughs> so that was a fa the version, we, that was fantastic. That just show just seemed to take off right from the moment it started to the end. It was just nonstop excitement, entertaining, and everybody was just caught up in the, the moment. So that must have been a lot of fun to do that one. It was it was great fun. The f the first time I played High Pockets Duncan and all of the announcers from the different radio stations, and that was when Tibor was directing. And I had so much fun with that. It worked out so well. Quick hat changes and quick accent changes, and <laughs> it it was just a gas. And then five years later, they did it again. And I I, I I didn't play. I played High Pockets Duncan and some of the announcers. But then I did some dancing and singing, and much more dancing and singing in the second one as well. So that was it was great. I, I enjoyed those shows both both times very very much. Great company, great cast. And the guy music. who played Buddy Holly, do you know where he ended up or wound up? Or? Well, he's he was from Toronto, and I I haven't stayed in touch with him. I assume he's still plugging away somewhere. I hope so. Through Cardworth. Yeah. It was yeah. great. Um, tips for somebody who's in, you know, let's say, grade 11 right now and going, mm, I kind of like the stage and drama class is kind of cool. Uh, what do you suggest they do if they want to get serious about the business? Um, it's, uh, it's kind of hard uh, because it's not a business that has a real good uh, structure for bringing youth into the environs. Um, <clears throat> but I would suggest just have a con you know phone somebody have a conversation with an actor that they may have seen on stage uh, somebody local and have a conversation with them about um, how to approach uh, someone at the theater like the it's hard to say directly phone the artistic director of a theater company and say you know I'm in grade 11 I'm interested um, but there may be a way of getting an introduction, and there, if there's a production that's age appropriate, they may audition you, and and that's the first you know your first steps are auditioning in f for people. Um, so learn how to talk to an actor and learn how to do an audition. That w that would really help. How many auditions do you think you've been on? <laughs> wow! Uh, in the early days, um, it was. You know, innumerable, I'm, uh, and even I know, talking again about the film, television stuff. You had to audition for everything. If there was a commercial, if there was a you know a, a film or a series or whatever, you had to be there. Now it's different. You can you can uh, record it and and send it. Um, but in those days, you had to be there. So we'd be in Regina an awful lot uh, auditioning, and for theater. Uh, generally speaking, what they, theaters do is they hold an audition time once during the year, and they say, we are auditioning people who are interested at this time of the year. Please phone and schedule your audition time. Gotcha. Um, so that's generally how that happens. <clears throat> and you were in The Englishman's Boy as well, right? Englishman's Boy, yeah, same thing. Yeah, I yeah. did an audition, at least one audition for that. Right, and, but what was that experience like? Was it hurry up and wait a lot? Because I imagine that's what it's going to oh, be. <laughs> always, yeah. I mean, there, uh, yes, it's, it's be ready. Yeah, and then and then they've got to set up the camera and check the light and make sure everything's in you know absolutely perfect condition, and then make sure the horses are ready and all of that sort of stuff. So it's it's high. It's a really complicated. A single shot of a film can be a very complicated process. There's so much going on. 
Um, but but I, I love it. I, I really do. I'd love to do more. Uh, I remember, of course, the director would say, okay, first positions. So then you have to go back where you started, right? So that's, yeah, yeah. That's the only acting yeah, did you, lesson I have. <laughs> were, you, were you in this? No, no, I was did in... You, uh, the four episodes they made of that TV show here that they filmed at the old SAS Tech, the Tech High School, I was in, I play, played a corpse, and that was a lot of fun. So that kind of stuff, lots of extra work. So it was right, right, it's right, fun. Right, it's right. A, like a good way if you're retired and you live in a this place like Winnipeg or Vancouver. Heck, that's what I'd do. I'd just hang around and be an extra all the time, get $14 an hour for <laughs> drinking coffee and yep. reading a book. <laughs> People make a living doing it. So yeah. <laughs> it's just an honorable, honorable job. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy your retirement, uh, no matter what it is. And uh, thank you again for, for taking some time to tell us what being an actor in Canada is really all about. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for visiting with us today. This is Talking Books and Stuff with Dennis Rimmer. Contact him at dennis at talkingbooks.tk. Thank you, and may all the good news be yours. Oh, and don't forget to check out his book, The Great Canadian Notebook, available across Canada and at amazon.ca. Oh, oh.